all of us at times in life will worry. I mean, I wonder what's causing you to worry today? Have you, have you come today and there's been this kind of heaviness over perhaps an illness in the family or you're concerned about your kids or you're concerned about your parents or, or job-wise, it's just not good at the moment. And you've kind of thought, well, do I go to church? If I do, I'm not going to be able to concentrate. This is just playing on my mind all the time. Well, if you have, please know that you are not alone. You are not alone because so many people struggle with the issue of worrying. Worry is caused, here we go, worry is caused by the anticipation of a future negative event. It's the type of anxiety that builds on irrational thoughts. What if something bad happens? What if this goes wrong? What if I can't handle it? And those thoughts start to build in our minds and they play round and round and round. And so that the worry gets bigger and bigger. And because of our nature, because, uh, well, the Bible actually speaks about us having what's known as a sinful nature, a nature which doesn't naturally turn to God. We tend to default towards fear instead of defaulting towards faith. I have a lump on my neck. Do we go towards faith or do we go towards fear? Naturally, we will always go towards, well, this is the end of it. This is the end of me. I, I, this, this, is gonna be, this is gonna be awful. You see, if you wake up at night, you're probably worried about your kids, your exams, your health, your finances, your broken relationship, your job. And we're always drawn to the anticipation of a future negative event. So if you're a worrier, or if you're someone who just worries occasionally, I just want to let you know that Jesus has something to say about it. Now, there are lots and lots of different ways that you can address this, but uh, being a follower of Jesus myself, I'm always keen to find out what does Jesus have to say about the issue that I'm facing? So Matthew, one of Jesus' um, disciples, one of his close followers, um, he recorded Jesus' life and he records what Jesus has to say about worry. And honestly, it's quite tough teaching, but ultimately, I just think it is great news for you and for me if we want to experience this thing called peace of mind. So in chapter six of Matthew's gospel, Matthew's account of Jesus' life, he highlights five things that we don't need to worry about. And for many of these, we could find excuses as to why we should worry about them. These are the five things that he speaks about. He says, don't worry about finance, food, fitness, fashion, and future. Okay, five Fs, okay? So when you go home today, you can say, what did he talk about? Oh, it's about five Fs. What were they? Can't remember, but it was five Fs. There we go, five Fs, finance, food, fitness, fashion, and future. This is what Jesus says. He says this, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. And whenever I was taught, whenever you see a therefore, you've always got to ask the question, what's it there for? So you have to look at the previous verse to find out what he was talking about when he says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. This is what comes just before those words. He says this, no one can serve two masters. Either one you will hate, or either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. What's he talking about? This is what he's talking about. You cannot serve both God and money. One of them is gonna be boss in your life. One of them you are gonna put more trust in than the other. So you have to decide which one you trust in more for your security and happiness in life. Is it going to be in God or is it going to be in your finances? And Jesus is saying just here. He's saying, don't spend so much time worrying about finances. You can't trust both. Sort out who you really trust in. So then he goes on to say this. He says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, food or drink, or about your body, your fitness and your health, and what you will wear your fashion. That's what he goes on to speak about. Food. Do you know what? There will be some people here who you definitely worry about food because 
The lack of finance that you have means that you struggle to shop, which means that food banks become very important to you. And I understand that sense of concern. It must be horrendous. But to be honest, for the majority of us here, we don't worry about where our food is coming from, other than which fast food place we're going to call in at, or which restaurant that we want to go and find dine at. Most of our worry doesn't come from, am I going to get it? It's more the case of, where am I going to get my meal from? Or we worry about whether it's good or bad for us. And for me, I worry if I've eaten too much. To be honest, that's the most that I would ever worry about food as to how much I've eaten. But Jesus says this, he says, don't put your energy worrying about what you might or might not have. And then he goes on to speak about birds. In other words, he must be talking to them and then he looks around and he just sees birds flying around. And he says this, this is what he says. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they. Ever seen a bird worried? Of course not. If a bird is hungry, it doesn't worry. What does it do? It goes out to find some food. It does something about it, which illustrates, I think Jesus was illustrating the difference between concern and worry. You can be concerned over something which is different from worrying about something. Concern focuses on challenges and moves us to action. Yeah, so I'm concerned that I'm hungry, I'll go and sort out a meal. Worry focuses on what's beyond our control and results in inaction. Someone once said, it's stewing without doing. Yeah? In other words, that's what we worry about. We stew on it, stew without doing. That's why Jesus asked this question. He says, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So it's okay to be concerned about your finances and about how you handle them. It's okay to be concerned about what you eat, what you wear, your health, how fit you are. Concern moves us to action. But don't stew and worry over them. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying life's too short. Calling us away from a life of worry. And he's calling us towards a life of trust. This is what he goes on to say. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So Jesus is saying, look, even with regards to your future, don't put your energy into worrying about what's going to happen. We can create plans, of course, because concern about our future is good. We want to be able to plan, but we have to plan with open hands and trust God with our future. So why does Jesus tell us not to worry? I think it's for two reasons. One, because worry is bad for us. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. And if you struggle by worrying day in and day out, you are not living life to the full. He offers us something better. Worry is one of the greatest causes of poor mental health because we allow it to be rehearsed over and over in our minds. But the second reason, and I think the main reason why Jesus tells us not to worry is this. Because worry reveals our lack of trust in a God who so loves us and who promises to care for us. So every time we worry, we're saying, God, I don't trust your plan about my future. I don't trust that you're going to do good for me. I don't trust that you're with me. Someone once said these words. They said, what you worry about the most reveals where you trust God the least. Now, if you're someone who is exploring faith or you're kind of, um, uh, you've come along today because you've invited and you think kind of thinking religion, church stuff, that's not really my thing. I understand that. But what I, what I just want to ask you to do is just to consider that if, if there is a God who has made us, if there is a God who, is, who, who can still oversee our lives, do you think that he will know the best way for us to live? And if there is a God who knows the best way, is it at least worth listening to him? So 
What do you worry about the most reveals where your trust, where you trust God the least? So I'll ask the question, what do you worry about the most? What is it that gets our energy, but it always takes us to a negative place? If you can identify that, it will reveal something to you. Now, what are we supposed to do then? So it's fine Jesus telling us not to worry. <laughs> Anyone can do that, can't they? They can say, don't worry. But, but, but what does he say about how we can turn those worries around? Well, Jesus shows us our part, our responsibility, and also his response. He says there's a better way to live than worrying. And this is what he finishes off this little section by saying. He says, but seek first his, that's God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. In other words, he's saying, put God first, model your character on God's character. And when we do that, all these things, all those things that you've worried about, all of those things will be given to you as well. 